All right, welcome back to the channel. So uh, in this video, I, I want to start doing some shorter videos that are a little more to the point. Um, and one of the things that I realize I haven't done is I haven't covered any of the uh, standalone executables and and uh, how we can use those with a SAPI. Um, so uh, we've we've covered creating a single file plugin and a binary plugin in the using the Eclipse uh, script wizard, but we haven't covered the standalone executable. Um, so there's also a, and it's the third option, standalone executable. Uh, there's a fourth option, that's a visual scripting uh, action pack. Um, I probably won't cover that uh, just because I've never really explored that very much. Um, but uh, standalone executables can be extremely useful, especially if you want to like open up a bunch of patients, look for something, and uh, you know then close the patient and move on. So uh, like if you want to generate a report, uh, like let's say, for example, you have a list of patients that were treated uh, or that are going to be treated this week, right? And maybe you want to pull some specific uh, information um, or maybe last month. Maybe you want to know, you know, what patients were treated last month and you want to have a script that will that will do that, uh, you know, instead of either using ARIA for whatever reason, or maybe you want to pull something that's in that's that's actually the data is actually in Eclipse. Uh, then that, that can be useful. So uh, goals for this video is what is it? So it's uh, instead of uh, so instead of it being a plugin, so the single file plugin and the binary plugin, those both have to be run uh, from the tools scripts folder, right? The standalone executables are just that. They're, they end in .exe as opposed to .dot uh, uh, CS or for the single file plugin or .dll for the binary plugin. Um, the executables they end in .exe, and those can be run uh, on their own. Um, so if you're in a Citrix environment, if you're I think if you're on like a a box environment, I think and I could be completely wrong. I think you can just run it. I'm not really sure because I'm not. Uh, I'm not in that environment. I'm in uh, the Citrix environment. So the way that we have to run it is we still run it through. We have to. Run, it has to be run on the server, so not on your like local computer that you're accessing uh, the uh, the executable from. So you still put it in like your uh, published scripts folder, that sort of thing. You just don't view it the same way that you would uh, like a single file plugin or a binary plugin. The standalone executable, you can actually, you, what you can do though, is you can create a plugin runner that will launch your executable. So you could put a single file plugin, like a very simple .cs file into uh, your scripts folder. And then what that would do is you would run it from there and that script would in turn run the uh, executable. And one of the benefits of that is that if you're running it with a patient open, you can actually pass some context information to the executable. So let's say you want your executable to uh, um, to have access to the patient that's open, but maybe you also want to be able to open up other patients. Um, so you want to pull like the patient summaries or you know that sort of thing. Um, so you could do both. You could go ahead and feed it whatever information is in the context. Uh, and then you could also give, allow your user to, uh, you know, have other information as well. Um, so with the standalone executable, you can, and, and it's, this isn't even necessarily a uh, standalone, well, I guess it, it would, it would be an app. So you could create a different type of app, like a, um, uh, like a console application, which I guess that's, that's what we would be creating anyway. But there would be, you could, you could create a standalone executable with a user interface as opposed to just using the console, right? Um, so anyway, so it, it opens up a lot of uh, possibilities because sometimes some things are easier to do, um, you know, outside of the context of the single file and binary plugins. So anyway, so that's a general overview of what they are. Um, so let's just make one. So I've just got uh, a sample standalone um, named and I have my folder and I have that selected. So I'm just going to do create 
and then it asks me if I want to use um, or to launch Visual Studio. I do. <clears throat> and so it's creating it right now. And again, the, the, the benefit of using the script wizard is that it goes it it knows some of the things that need to be set up for like to be run in the Eclipse environment. So like, for example, you have to build the X64, um, you know, those various things. So this only started with a single file, very similar to uh, the um, single file plugin. However, if you if you've ever created a single file plugin, you'll notice that or you'll you'll you might remember that it does not contain this portion the binary plugin contains the portion for uh, the is writable true so this tells us right off the bat that we could write to the database using a uh, using this format of application so if you wanted to do that you would do you would uncomment this and then you would say whenever you want to you know uh, begin your modifications you you do you have your patient and then you do patient dot begin modifications and it's a method uh, within the patient so this is uh, this is the file right and that it creates and we could grow this into you know a much larger project if we wanted to um, <clears throat> with like multiple files and, and all those things because it will build it will it will build if you go to project and your properties um, and actually, let me uh, do something really quick. I think there's a way to, let's see, options, let's see, font. And if we do, I think it's maybe this one, all text. We can try making this bigger. Uh, did that work? Let's try something big. Nope. Uh, apologies, I'm getting sidetracked, but I want, let's put this back to nine. Let's see, I'm going to pause it real quick so it doesn't get long. All right, so uh, what I'm trying to do is to make all of the fonts larger in the, the surrounding like environment. So if you go to Tools and Options, and if you select, uh, so that you go to Tools, Options, and then you go to Font, you can search for Font, so Fonts and Colors. And then if you select Environment from the dropdown, so it's right here, and then if you, you'll notice that the size is uh, not changeable. Um, but if you change the font, so let's just change it to Calibri. And now we can change this. So let's try like 16. And so now, hopefully, this is much larger. I know it's, it's much larger for me, so it's actually easier for me to read it because um, I'm kind of far away from my monitor. But um, so anyway, you can kind of play around with that if you want. Um, anyway, so um, unfortunately I didn't make this any bigger, but uh, you can change like your target framework. Uh, you can see that the output uh, type is a console application. When it builds, you'll notice that it did not add the dot asapi. So that's not necessary. It's necessary for binary plugins and I believe for the .cs files. I can't remember. I don't think it's actually ne necessary for .cs files. I think it's only necessary for binary plugins. Could be wrong. Could be misremembering, but uh, but anyway, so this will end in .exe. You will not see it when you go to Tools and Scripts, even if it's in there. Um, so if you want to launch it from there, you can launch it with a uh, um, a .cs plugin runner, uh, like I was saying, um, and uh, basically you just start the application right um, from there. So. Um, anyway, so it's a single file, so let's just close this, all right, and uh, we have our, uh, the namespace, and you'll see that the in, inside main, which is, is run in a uh, uh, executable, 
there's a, a static void main inside that it, is, it creates the app and then it and then it runs the method this execute method so then down here you have your to do they want you to add your code here so basically once the uh, so it's using this application uh, app application dot create application this is how we gain access to a SAPI. So this application, if when I hover over it, it says vms.tps.common.model.api.application. Uh, so it's not like a Windows application. This is a this is unique to VMS, um, like the uh, a SAPI, uh, um, uh, like a lot API, right? So uh, it creates an application, and then we have the it passes that app. The, that application to this method. So in our, if we want to just follow their thing, we can just, you know, create something here. So we could say, um, let's say we have a, um, maybe we have a patient ID equals, I don't know, uh, test patient. Or if you only use numbers, maybe it's like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, something like that, right? Um, so then you have that. Uh, and then you would say, uh, you would, maybe you want to, oops, uh, maybe you want to open the patient. So you would say app dot open patient by ID. Um, you can also open patient if you pass in the patient summary. So you could loop through like the patient summaries or if you, uh, let's say you bound, and let's say you had like a GUI or um, you had uh, created an option maybe even for every single patient, which that would be silly. But let's say you had a GUI and then they searched for the, uh, the ID and then they selected that ID and if the, uh, your binding is to the patient summary, then you would you could then pass the patient summary to this open patient, or you can open patient by ID, um, so that that works too, um, and then we'll just give it the uh, patient ID. Oops, and my autocorrect is not. Oh goodness. Gosh, my keyboard's all in the funny position. All right, so then that's what you would that's how you would open the patient, uh, and then we could actually put that into a variable. So if we said patient patient equals app dot patient or app dot uh, open patient by ID, now we have access to let's say all of their plan setups or courses. All right, so we could say for for each of our course and patient dot courses. And then you could say, you know, then you could add, you could actually access all of their plan setups for each of our the setup in uh, courses dot uh, course not courses dot uh, where let's say we want to know if it's only been treated right so is uh, Oh, you know what, that's X, let's see. Um, no, we don't want that. We want, uh, let's see, plan setups, right? Dot where, there we go. Uh, X dot uh, is treated. Well, we could just say is treated. We don't need the is true. Um, but if you wanted to be discreet, right, you could. Because if you if you don't put that, it does leave some potential doubt that you didn't mean to do that, right? You didn't mean to put the not uh, exclamation point in front, right? Which would mean is false. So I guess the theory is that if you do this, you didn't accidentally type true, you you meant to type true. Um, but you know, it's your code, you do what you want. Um, and then if you really wanted to, you could add pay, uh, you know comments, for each, uh, well, we could say group three courses, loop through plan setups, 
they'll just say plans that are uh, or that have been treated, right? And then like, let's say you wanted to, uh, you could say um, and x dot, uh, let's see, creation date time is greater than equal to uh, date time dot um, now minus seven. Let's see, can we do minus seven? And int. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Date. Oh, we could do. Um, actually, we could do. Um, we could do add days minus seven. I think that would work. So, like within the last week, right? You could do something like that. Um, I don't know why you would want to do that, but you know, you might. Um, and then. You know, or and then is you know when we're talking about comments instead of uh, like we said loop through courses right well if we type course instead of var like now we know for a fact that it, we're looping through courses right um, but like if you just said uh, var c and patient dot courses we can assume that you know c is stands for course whatever it's just all about readability like after after you've you know moved on past this script for a week or a month or a year or whatever or you know maybe someone else is reading it and they're trying to figure out what you did um, anyway uh, none of that really matters it's uh, totally up to you so oh gosh we're already at 16 minutes um, okay so this is just a quick example of how you can utilize a uh, standalone I think what I want to do uh, next uh, in a different video though is um, show how we can use a console. So um, if you want to see that, we're actually going to utilize something that uh, Rex Carden um, has added to, it's a NuGet package. Um, you could absolutely just use console dot right line, you know, whatever. Um, and you could do whatever you want or like read line and all that. You could absolutely just use that if you wanted to, to get information from the, the user. Um, but like, you know, we don't want to hard code the uh, um, patient IDs, right? But let's say you wanted to loop through. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to stop and I'm going to, uh, in the next video, I'm going to show how you can get the patient summaries and then maybe loop through those. And then maybe in, instead of applying this to one particular patient's plan, maybe you want to look at that for a bunch of patients, right? Um, and then I'll also show like the, the console. So with that, uh, thanks for watching. And if you have any comments or uh, questions or anything, just uh, be sure to let me know. All right, we'll see you next time.